Hi, everyone. I'm James Garbutt. And I'm Denny Duma. And this is the Garbutt Duma Real Estate Podcast. Market condition adjustments, let's say. Let's use the word adjustments. I like this. Activity slowing for sure in the last couple of months. There's been a lot of changes. We've seen prices increase dramatically in the last year and a half. And naturally, we've hit a bit of a plateauing period. And it's important on the realtor side to have these conversations of realistic expectations with sellers early. And for sellers that are trying to make a move, whether it's an upsize, downsize, moving out of the neighborhood, whatever your situation is looking like, plan and um, budget realistically. Um, I think it, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment if you are looking at a neighbor that sold in January and expecting that that number is going to be available today or higher. In most situations, in most neighborhoods in Greater Vancouver, it is not. So I guess today we just want to chat about um, expectations, um, what to kind of game plan around when listing your home and um, maybe some strategy if you are trying to achieve a high number that was available in January, February, listing at three or four hundred thousand dollars lower, getting one offer and countering them three hundred thousand dollars higher, usually is not gonna work right now. No, it's it's really important as a listing agent to confidently have this conversation with your sellers. Let them know what the market value is. That's the starting point. Let them know what the market value of their home is and and then work your conversation around listing price from there. Um, let them know your their options, listing low, hoping for multiples. Let them know the risk involved with that. Let them know listing market value or higher, what that timeline might be like and what to expect. Um, it's really important to set expectations for two reasons. As a realtor, it helps your business because you want the sellers leaving this transaction being happy with their experience, not let down. So don't promise them the moon and not be able to deliver that. I think this is a really, really important tone to set with the seller from the beginning because you want them to also feel confident. So if the offer they end up getting is close to the range that you told them they would get, they're going to feel like, I got it. Like I'm I'm getting the best possible scenario for my product, my really important investment. So setting um, expectations and letting them really ask a lot of questions and understand the scope of the full transaction as a whole. I feel like this is one that... Um, a lot of agents don't take the time to explain to their clients. Understanding the full scope, and that means selling at this price and buying at this price. What does that mean? Like selling now and not having to get into a rental before buying. How much money will that save me or how much money will I spend if I do have to get into a rental? That's a really important conversation to have. It's important too with um, with investor clients. It's not just people who are living in the properties. Investors need to know, like, if, I, if I buy this one now and I can get a tenant in right away versus shopping around for a few months, losing out on a few months of rental income. Um, certain times of year are better to get rent, you know, get your products rental, uh, rented quicker and for better prices, depending, you know, summertime is usually great, especially if you're in a college area and you're renting to university students. Um, yeah. So understanding the full scope of the transaction, I feel is something really, really important that not a lot of agents do. And I don't know why. <laughs> it's a really important conversation to have. And I think it's, it's interesting how many times we go into listing appointments right now and and you know we're asking a lot of questions like what is the goal? Is it top size? Okay, great. Now might be a really good time because your condo has kind of held its value and single family homes have come down 5, 10, 15% depending on the neighborhood that you're looking in. So that full equation now is actually, you know, the gap is closer together than it was 3 months ago even though potentially what you're selling would have sold slightly higher. So it's it's important to like when you are buying and selling in the same market, it's important to really look at that as an entire equation rather than just like, I want to get this for my home and if I don't, I'm not going to sell it. But That's the biggest mistake. We hear it all the time, a stubborn seller that like, I need to hear, this is just an example, I need to hear like 1.3. If I don't hear 1.3 or higher, I'm not selling. But they're also losing out on a purchase that could have potentially saved them $50,000. It's You have to somehow... 
you know, paint this picture for them so that they can understand what, what's happening. Yeah. And I think it's also okay as a listing agent to to just suggest that maybe they wait. You know, if this is a downsize move for someone and it's not time sensitive and they don't need it to happen in 2022, but they are just kind of like mentally ready to make the move in the near future. If they really want what their neighbor sold for, let's say their neighbor sold for 1.8 in February and they really want that and you really think the market value of their home today is 1.7 and getting 1.8 probably is not realistic. It's okay to share that. Say, you know, if you were to list today, this is likely what you're going to get. We are, you know, what are you going to? Are you looking to downsize to a condo? Okay, great. This is where the condo values are right now. And they're slowly climbing, right? Condos are, are busier than single family homes right now in most neighborhoods. So condos are climbing. If you wait till the fall and, and decide, okay, you know what? I'm just done with this maintenance of a, of a larger home. Let's just move it. You might be paying 10% more for the condo. For sure. And you're spending money on maintaining a detached house. <laughs> totally. But if you're not willing to sell less than that 1.8, that's okay. Maybe you just wait a year, right? Like let's readdress in, in spring of 2023 because that number right now with interest rates climbing and the you know fear that they're going to go up again in June and potentially one more time this year, it's difficult to see that peak pricing coming back in this calendar year. It will very soon, I think, whether it's 2023 or 2024. Um, I think this is going to be a short-term little blip in the market. But if your expectation is all-time peak pricing, maybe just sit on the sidelines and wait for a little bit. Right. And we've had a lot of clients do that. We had clients wait on the sidelines for three years. I mean, there was so many... Um, especially downsizers that wanted 2017 prices over the last few years. And we just told them to wait. And a lot of them did. The ones that waited got their price and were heroes. And then others sold a little bit you know, too early because they didn't want to wait or couldn't wait. And mm. that's okay too. I think it's just really important to educate the seller so that they know their options and then let them decide. Mm -hmm. These, I mean, these are pretty difficult conversations to just summarize without any... Um, actual property to relay information on. But these are really detailed conversations that we have with sellers in, in any listing appointment is very specific to their situation, right? And the, our suggestions maybe change very drastically if they're looking to upsize versus downsize versus move out of town or you know, go into the rental market, whatever that may be. So I guess that is a quick little summary, but maybe doesn't give a ton of info because you kind of need a specific situation to go into detail on, right? Right. So here's here's a good one. We had um, a client that they wanted to move to Kelowna. They, they wanted to move to Kelowna. Their kids have moved to Kelowna over the last few years just because it's more affordable. So they, they their goal was to get to Kelowna. Uh, Kelowna's prices started to rise big time um, in the last few years. Um, I think they performed really, really well in, in many areas and, and kind of shocked everybody. So um, our sellers got a little bit nervous because they kind of were on the tail end of it. So prices were going up and up and up and up. Um, we had a conversation with them. We're like, okay, if you buy this in Kelowna today, and I just went, I don't know the Kelowna market at all. I just went, I called an agent there and I asked them what their feelings were on the market. I pulled a bunch of sales, recent sales and active listings that were similar to what our client was wanting and just said like, this is what you're looking for and this is what the average property is selling for that fits all the specs that you're looking at. This is what I can sell your home for right now. Does this make sense? Does this transaction make sense to you guys if we get this price? They really wanted one nine for their place. They really, really wanted one nine or higher. They were one of those stubborn sellers that said, if I don't hear one nine, I'm not selling. Um, but when we started to pull the data for them and they could start to see that the prices were cooling a little bit in Kelowna, but we were still holding the market pretty good here. Like there was still like they they're probably the last good sale in their neighborhood, to be honest, for a little while. But it made sense. We didn't get the one nine because it wasn't realistic for a rancher, but we got high one eights and they I mean, I think that they compromised maybe twenty or thirty thousand dollars, but they ended up getting into the property they wanted in in Kelowna at just the right time because those pri prices there are holding really well. And I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't called agents there because they're like, yeah, it's cooling, but so many people from all different places are moving to Kelowna still. It's not just people from Vancouver and they have pretty deep pockets. And now they're thrilled because they got into their townhouse up there that they wanted. They sold their detached house down here, but they have to understand the scope and, and the risk if they wait too long. There's a really good example, right? Because if that 
exact situation happens with someone who's selling a Langley or Abbotsford single family home right now, the conversation is very different because that market has cooled and come off peak pricing a lot more than this one in the Tri Cities. So, the I think it's really important to have these conversations, ask a lot of questions to, uh, with the seller what they're trying to achieve, and then kind of game plan from there based on you know what their expectation is and and where what move they're trying to make. Having those conversations with the seller is really important, and uh, do your research. If you sound really confident and you know what you're talking about, your seller is going to feel good about it. <laughs>